last few years I've been doing audits on HONOS and what that means is I'm looking at um, the HONOS that staff do and that can be uh, over a, a one year um, period, so that would be like four HONOS. Just looking at those and then looking at the progress notes that accompany that two weeks um, and seeing if there's a correlation between the um, progress notes, the recovery plans and any other documentation and the HONOS. I think initially it was to get a baseline around the accuracy, like, you know, if you want to determine accuracy, then perhaps you do need to look at the, um, that what's happening on the ground, like in the progress notes. And that. So it was getting a baseline and then periodically doing um, audits to determine how accurate that is so that we can um, start using it more effectively. Um, an example of that would be back in 2013, um, I actually looked at around about uh, 1,068 HONOS and, and then of course read the two weeks of notes leading up to each HONOS, so it took, took a while. But I saw that as a way of um, properly gauging where, where the HONOS was accurate or not so that we can start to use it in places like MDT meetings. Um, and the ultimate goal, of course, is to be able to discuss those HONOS with the clients. I think it has led to service improvements. I see evidence within um, the client notes, etc. And I think initially, before we um, start to utilise HONOS really effectively, I think one of the things it did do is it's encouraged staff to actually look at clients more holistically um, given the fact that there are items in the HONOS around um, social, uh, functional, um, which often um, perhaps gets overlooked in the, in the mix of um, the medical model, for want of better words. So I think it is, I think there is evidence that staff are beginning to utilise OT more for things like relaxation. Uh, well, actually, HONOS is designed to be a very transparent process. Um, it is a clinical, um, it's a clinician's view of the person, um, but if, you, if you're doing it in, in partnership with the client, then you need to discuss that with the person and explain why you've given them a certain rating that you have, and that it also provides insight for the client. They can see where the high and low spots are, um, so I think it, it's a really good tool for helping to, to in recovery planning. It's a, it has discussion points, it has um, highs and lows, places where you may want to work on, and, and just generally help with the um, recovery planning. The next phase of training would be around using the HONOS that you have in places like the, the multidisciplinary meetings, um, discharge, um, anything really, but particularly around um, planning recovery and planning ongoing work. So we've done the uh, how to do HONOS and we're now, why do we do HONOS and how do we use it? How do we use what we've got in our um, data warehouse, effectively. Definitely, and, and the only way you can determine that is by looking. And so um, when I think about the initial baselines back in 2010, um, they weren't as good as they are now. Outcome measurement is really important um, for us at uh, Northland DHB. We need to clearly understand uh, where we're going to. Um, HONOS is one of the ways, along with other outcome measures like ADOM and um, the measures that we use in mental health, to actually guide the clinician and to guide the service towards the outcomes that they're looking for in terms of mental well-being for clients and their whanau. The project that uh, Paul had was a really good one. Um, in Northland DHB, we're doing a lot of work around um, the model of care, and we're doing a lot of work around improving our service um, delivery. 
To do that, we need to start at the cornerstones and Honus is the cornerstone of that. So um, the work that he did in collating um, clients' notes versus what they actually recorded really helps to embed a quality culture. And it just helps us in terms of improving the service that we deliver to um, the people of Northland. Just really to thank uh, Paul and the team um, and our workforce for actually doing a whole lot of this work. It took a lot of time, a lot of um, energy. My message, I guess, is we can collect data, and we do, but if you want to determine the accuracy of the data, then one way to do that is to actually look at what's happening on the ground and see if there's a correlation between the two because otherwise you're just filling all the trees in the forest with nuts and not doing anything with them.